All right, so in this video, Lori from Tech Notice and myself are going to have an argument, a discussion, a debate, as it were. And Lori's going to try, try to change my mind that the MacBook Pro, M1 Pro, and M1 Max are the best computer you could buy on the planet, hands down. Nothing beats it. Lori, why is that not true? Change my mind. Okay, first of all, what do you do? Do you do video editing, photo editing, uh, whatever you do? I am a video editor and I edit thumbnails and I yep. occasionally live stream to YouTube. And this could be also somebody occasionally streaming their games to say Twitch, that's me. So uh, I've, I've heard that argument before on, uh, you know, on the web, people saying that MacBook Pro is so much better than any other PC, like the latest Intel, Alder Lake, 12 900K i9 is worse with an RTX 3080, 3090 than MacBook Pro yet, there's a lot of false benchmarks out there as well. I don't know how people benchmark their systems where false I benchmarks been... for the MacBook Pros or like false benchmarks like the Intels are they make them look lower than they actually are. The benchmarks how they benchmark the Intel uh, system. For for example, a lot of people okay. uh, test the Intel system without putting the iGPU on on the Intel system. Just if you didn't know, Intel latest uh, you know CPUs, they come with a little processor inside the CPU, which actually so also gen. has, that's the 12th gen, the latest, okay. best one that is out there, which basically is uh, for creators, for video editors, what the awesome thing is there are the video encoders and decoders. So they're video media engines that decode and encode video for you to have very smooth playback. And Apple made a big deal about this, you know, of eight, you know, ProRes, uh, simultaneous playback of 8K, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, Intel has these things been going for a long time as well. And unless you enable it, you're going to get three 30% lower scores. But just for Premiere Pro, for example, I can see that the uh, M1 Max is roughly about 30% lower than 12900K with an RTX 3090 with 64 gigabytes of RAM. So then my question is, though, can you, can you carry your PC from place to place and edit on it? Well, the thing is... Um, that is a very good point. And uh, do you know what? I might have to uh, kind of uh, take a punch on this one because that's the big uh, thing. If you are a creator who is on the go, yeah, go on. You can't like, you know, break your PC around unless you've got a small PC like this one over here. Then you might be able to, you know, carry it around. But that looks uh, pretty on the go friendly. <laughs> Very pre on the go, get ready. Believe it or not, there is a full size RTX 3070 in here. Oh my word. So it's very that interesting. Cool. Yeah. But uh, if you are a video editor and you have maybe agency or whatever, and you are not on the go and you still choose to have a laptop instead of a desktop PC, for me, that makes no sense. If yeah. you have a static like table or setup where you're editing things, like, why would you get a laptop instead of PC because it's so much more powerful when it's... Well, I mean, if power. I'm on a job site, you know, and I'm recording, and I want to kind of, like, check my footage to play it back, maybe, like, do a quick edit, check the audio, you know, that would allow me, if I'm shooting AK, RE footage, you know, have, like, multiple camera angles, you know, I've got, like, $200,000 worth of cameras, you know, I could, like, I could play back, you know, on, on set, make sure everything looks good. And then also, like... I think about when I get back to my desk, I can just plug in and that kind of becomes my desktop PC, you know, so I don't have to own more than one device. Everything kind of stays on my one device. Yeah, but are you willing to have the PC once you get to your editing, when you actually start editing your full feature film? Because it sounds like you're doing that. Oh uh, yeah, I've got you... tons of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds exactly like that. It sounds like money is not, not like obstacle. Money's here. never an issue. I've got credit yeah. cards. Haven't I told you? Yeah. I'm sorry. This is like, I'm I'm telling you to change my mind, but I'm being a little sarcastic <laughs> as well. No, it's funny. Just print some more. You yeah. Print, <laughs> Just print, print some, some more money. We're pretty famous for that around here in the US. Oh yeah. I think the whole world is just printing money at the moment. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the it thing. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's a tangent. Okay. So then my question is though, in all seriousness, like it's quiet. It has good thermals. I have connectivity. I can plug it in at my at my at my station. It's gonna last me probably five to seven years at least. You know why? Why do I need a PC? I'm still not convinced, Lori. Like I'm still not convinced why quite I need a PC. 
uh, like this thing costs like thirty seven hundred dollars. A PC build is gonna be mind about on the same price. Like you know, what's it matter? So let's say you spec out your MacBook Pro. It's gonna cost you about five six grand something like that. Because uh, yeah, you know, sounds like you need that type of storage when you're on the go. You need a little bit more. For the yep. same PC, you would get a PC that's roughly about thirty percent faster. So the question for you is: At what price to, point, though? At five thousand dollars, five six thousand dollars, you get a PC that is thirty percent faster. So if we're going to spend so the, exact same money, we're going to have about twenty to thirty percent more performance. Yes, exactly. So the question yeah. is: Are you willing to um, have a thirty percent less performance for this and have no upgradeability, or? You get the you know screen and keyboard with this as well. Are you willing to pay thirty percent of the performance for the screen and keyboard and other things? But it also gives you the portable aspect. Yeah, I, I think I think the biggest thing is like for me, you know, I know Apple lasts a long time. Are PC builds actually going to last a long time? Uh, like, that's a good what point. do you mean by upgrade path? Uh, you should check out the previous video about the upgrade path. But basically, all the things in your PC can be upgraded. You know and you can take them to your next build, whereas on your laptop, you can't take the same screen to your next laptop, keyboard, CPU, anything. When you go to the next laptop, like your old stuff leaves behind, and then you start from scratch as well, whereas on the PC, you don't have to do that. Yeah, I was thinking about, you know, not to like argue with myself, but just to be honest, like I'm thinking about, I have a 2015 MacBook Pro here, and <clears throat> this thing will only be as good as the day I bought it. You know, and that's one of the things that I would I would change my own mind is after I buy this 2015 MacBook Pro, which is great for Photoshop and graphic design, which is what I was doing when I purchased it. And then I go and I, I start video editing. Now, all of a sudden, I have to buy an entirely new laptop. I don't get to just upgrade my laptop and say, okay, cool, I'm video editing now. Let's get GPU performance. And I need more storage because now I'm shooting 6K B-RAW. And, you know, I need more storage and like, that's not an option. I have to start plugging in external drives. There's no upgrade ability. There's no customization that takes place. And if the laptop burns out, because this one did go dead and it was only out of Apple's uh, graciousness that they actually rebuilt my motherboard and everything for free. But if they wouldn't have, I would have been out my $2,100 I paid for that laptop <laughs> when I first bought it. Whereas with a PC build, I would have been out 250 bucks for a new motherboard. So I just, in a sense, changed my own mind. But that's, I think, really what it's getting down to, I think, Glory, is like, if you want on-the-go performance, then this is great. It's cool, quiet, has amazing it's, thermals. Yeah, honestly, I think uh, I would change my own mind as well. If you're on the go, there isn't anything better than a MacBook Pro. Let's right say now, if, currently, absolutely. Cu currently, right now, yeah. Because if your uh, workflow, your work, whatever you do for your living requires half of the time you're, I don't know, editing something on the road. You're and you don't have or... a charger to plug into. Like you just exactly. need battery life and you need full performance. Exactly. Or you don't have a lot of space wherever you are. Then this could be like the only way to go. But I think there's also like section of people who, who don't need the portability aspect. And for that the PC is so much better. And even in pure performance, let's put everything, every, every other aspect on the side for tower PC. And I'm not talking about even like ridiculous server grade or workstation grade PCs. I'm talking about normal, like, you know, prosumer level PCs are just purely better in their performance than those, those laptops. But it's not quite equal either because we're talking about laptops versus PCs. We should be mm -hmm. even comparing PCs versus, you know, Mac Pro towers as well. But I think the Mac Pro tower is so aged at the moment that it doesn't make sense because the laptops are so much faster. But people yeah. who say that the laptops are purely just faster and better in every single way than the PC, that's not quite true. We're going to talk about that in another video, but in short, in Blender, yeah. for example, 3D editing, 3D rendering, the M1 Max and Pro, if you do the uh, benchmarks, the M1 Pro is 144% slower. Yeah. And the M1 Max is, uh, sorry, M1 uh, Pro, that was M1. The M1 Max is 144% slower and the M1 Pro is 153% slower. That's yeah, like and over I can, twice I can back that up. Because like I ran the benchmark, the Blender benchmark on like laptops, like for instance, like a Legion, a Legion Five Pro, and it took about a minute to to finish the Blender Classroom benchmark. It took yeah. nine minutes and thirty seconds, or nine minutes and nine seconds 
930 on the Max, 909 on the uh, M1 Pro. I mean, that's like nine times slower, you know? Yeah. And I'm, I I didn't do anything to try and rig that test. I just hit go, and that's what happened. Now, there's there's they, people are saying there's going to be some changes in the Blender benchmark to make, you know, Max more optimized for it. But as it sits right now, um, they're they're clearly not as fast in certain capacities. Yeah. But even at photo and video editing, if you run like the best of PC and the best of Mac, what is, you know, possible, then you'd still get like 30 to 40 percent uplift on the PC yes, side. But but the problem is the Puget Systems tests only run on um, the legacy Intel, which is through the emulation, which is through Reddit Zeta 2. Whereas if you run an Apple native app, as in like Adobe, Apple, Silicon native, you would get an equal or better benchmark. The problem is we don't have the ability to run those benchmarks head to head. And so I'll kick back at you and say that these are probably better machines than a desktop PC. Um, possibly, possibly. We don't have those benchmarks. But I just think there's a lot of a lot of ceiling keeping these from showing off the way that they actually could if we had fair, fair comparisons. Yeah, I, I guess we just have to wait for Adobe to, you know, update their software so we can have Run compatible uh, for this as well. Yeah, or Puget. If you guys want to know more about PC builds, you can head on over to Lori's channel. He's just reviewed the latest, like, creator PC lineup from Asus. Uh, if you guys are curious more about laptop on laptop comparisons, you can come over to my channel or subscribe to my channel. If you already are, thanks for being here. But we're we're going to do a whole series on MacBook Pros versus desktops versus laptops, just conversations that Lori and I are having. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out for those episodes, and we'll see you guys here on the next one.